What is up, investors? Welcome back to another episode of Everything Crypto, where we talk about everything related to the crypto markets, including the latest and most important news, deep dives on projects we see as having huge potential in the future, as well as technical analysis on all coins featured on the channel. Now, as always, please remember that nothing on this channel is financial advice, but rather my own thoughts, opinions, and research that I have compiled and broken down into a more digestible format for you, the viewer. So all you got to do is sit back, relax, grab that afternoon noon cup of joe and enjoy the content and on that note if you guys do enjoy the content please consider supporting myself and the channel by hitting that sub and like button by showing some love to the twitter page and if you have not joined the telegram channel yet what you can do is if you are watching this from a desktop just go ahead and scan this code or you can go ahead and click the link in the description down below now if you have been with this channel for a while you know that our number one rule is to be fully transparent at no additional cost that means no paid patreon no paid discord rather we believe that that full honesty should come with zero paywalls associated and that is what we use the Twitter and Telegram channel for is to just tweet or send out the moves that we are making in the markets in real time. Now with that said, we are going to get into the Kronos weekly market update and uh, ooh, this is going to be an ugly one guys. So buckle up because we have a lot of bad news to get through. So let's get right into it. So for starters, on Saturday, we came out with a video as Crypto.com did announce that they were once again making changes to their Crypto Earn program. And if you want the full details on these changes, you can go ahead and check out that video. I will leave the link in the description down below. But essentially what they did here was they did put into effect a new tier system where anything under 3,000 USD would get you 100% of the rewards. And then anything from 3,000 up to 30,000 USD, you are going to be getting 50 percent of the staking rewards that you would normally get and then for everything above 30,000 you are only getting 30 percent of tier two rewards so effectively if we look at these new rewards here what they did was they actually did buff some of them so they buffed ethereum from four percent back up to seven percent however as soon as you have anything over uh, 3,000 american worth of ethereum locked up in crypto earn it is going right back down to three and a half percent as it is being slashed in half so overall, horrific changes to the Crypto Earn program. And what we said in our conclusion is that this change was actually bullish for Crow because it would bring more attention to the Crypto Visa. And not even 12 hours after we put this video out, we did get more news that Crypto.com was in fact changing their Visa. And the initial set of changes that they made to this visa were horrible, in my opinion. If you did not watch the videos that we dropped on both Monday and Tuesday, I highly recommend you check them out. But for those of you that don't know, the initial changes to the visa that were being proposed was, first of all, a reduction of Crow card rewards. And these have remained the same. So unfortunately, on the Midnight Blue, you were getting 1%. You are now getting 0%. On the Ruby Steel, your cash back went down from 2% to 0.5%. The Royal Indigo and Jade Green cash back is down from 3% to 1.5% on the icy white from 5% to 3% and on the obsidian from 8% to 5% they also introduced some spending caps on the ruby steel and royal indigo and jade green cards themselves however the biggest biggest concern for me with the initial set of changes was they had actually removed all staking rewards from the visas now upon huge community uproar um, within 48 hours they did actually go back on these changes and decide to offer a more balanced approach of 8% per annum on your visa stake for Obsidian, Icy White, and Frosted Rose Gold members, and 4% per annum on the Royal Indigo and Jade Green card holders. So, so if you want the full rundown on those changes, do go ahead and check out our Tuesday video where we break down all of the updates, but effectively now the Royal Indigo and Jade Green staking rate has gone down from 10% to 4%, and then the Obsidian and Icy White down from 12% to eight percent and the conclusion we came to here was we are still bullish on this visa and on the crow program although it is not as good as before there is still much to look forward to in the crow ecosystem such as the nft platform their introduction into GameFi, the chronos verse and the DeFi wallet where you can still get a nice 12.3 percent yield it's already uh, increased since this image now i wish this could be the end of the bad news but it is not because with all of 
the volatility that we saw with Crow this weekend. We first saw the Kronos network go down for like a 48 hour period. Uh, myself included, I was impacted by this. I had to wait about 23 hours for my funds and they were pending between the main app and the DeFi wallet before the transaction was finally canceled. And then after the Kronos network issue was resolved, the visa changes were announced and this actually caused the crypto.org chain to completely go down as people began to actually remove their crow from the DeFi staking pools. People began to unstake their crow from the visa. And I think this just created a massive influx of volume onto the crypto.org chain that it simply could not handle. And then that also went down. So we had crypto earn rates changed. We had the crypto visa changed. Then we had the Kronos network and the crypto.org network all go down within a week's period. And I do wish this could be the end of the bad news, but we do need to get through one more unfortunate piece of news before we move on to the good stuff. Now, we made this video on April 21st, okay? And this was regarding a project called Scrub Finance that was built out on MM Finance, the biggest or the formerly biggest decks on the Kronos chain. And basically what had happened is we did see some suspicious activity from the Scrub Finance team. They were liquidating their own token, which was obviously causing the price to completely plummet. And it did have an impact on MM Finance as well as they were locked up together in liquidity pools. And we made this video here here on April 21st um, when it had already pulled here all the way down from about $52 at its peak all the way down to $6 and we made the video here when it recovered to around $12 warning the community that based on the signals from the scrub finance team that it looked very likely they were going to pull the rug and then so we made the video about here and then boom not even 24 hours later they did actually completely pull the rug and this thing tanked all the way from $12 it is currently sitting at a price of 35 cents i have no idea why it's up 81 percent on the day but do keep in mind that this is after the uh, scrub finance team themselves sold off basically all of their lion token and yeah they just completely pulled the rug on this community and we did go ahead and issue a warning to our community we told you five things that you should look for whenever you are considering investing in a project uh, including looking at the team behind it the tokenomics looking at whether or not they copy pasted a code or if they're adding their own intrinsic value to the code, as well as looking at the liquidity of the project and their audit slash white paper. So I really do hope that the community was able to protect their capital and pull out based on this warning, if they were, especially if you were already impacted by this first downturn here. However, unfortunately, like we mentioned, this did have a lot of negative impacts on MM Finance. It is recovering quite nicely on the day, but do keep in mind that not even one month ago, we were sitting at about a buck. 80 per mm finance coin and it is now sitting at 46 cents per coin so this actually did have um this rug pull had a ripple effect on mm finance and because mm finance was the biggest dex on the chronos chain it did also have an inherent ripple effect on the chronos chain itself so we can actually take a look here at DeFi llama we can see that really since this rug did get pulled on april 22nd it went from about 1.14 billion in total value locked all the way down to 720 23 million. So we've seen here a correction in the TVL on MM Finance of about 40%. And although I am disappointed in MM Finance for allowing such bad actors onto their decks, I do still have faith that MM Finance themselves are a legitimate project. And because it does play such an important role in the Kronos ecosystem, I do think it's important to actually look at their response to this concern and see what they have planned for the road ahead. So they talk about here about a bunch of the concerns that were uh, basically being communicated by the community. And they say here that they are working on a series of derivatives and products that work hand in hand to provide utilities beyond the common rabble and at the back of a series of large developments like an AMM DEX, interest bearing money markets, yield optimizers, algorithm peg tokens, NFTs, Web3, social media, stable swaps and stable coins and they are also working on options markets, synthetics, tranche funds and high yielding stable coin staking for up to 60% APR. And what they do here is they say that they are not concerned at all about the volatility, of course, as the project is so early on, because it is such a low liquidity project that is more susceptible to these pullbacks, especially when Crow as itself is pulling back, it does make sense that projects on the Kronos chain would also be impacted by this correction. 
Now, what they say here is that here at uh, MM Finance, we are not building a project. We are building an ecosystem for all individuals, regardless of crypto expertise, such that there is something for anyone and everyone. This has always been our mad vision since day one, and that will never chain, change. Sorry. Secondly, think about the chain we are on, Kronos. No one in this world is irreplaceable. When one whale leaves, another one can come in. And the fact is that CDC slash Kronos on its own is positioned to be the next up and coming chain in all of crypto look around the real world everywhere you turn you see the cdc logo in almost all places with high touch points for example formula one crow is unique because it is evm compatible and the only crypto ecosystem trying to bridge the gap between web 2.0 and web 3.0 as more users enter crow my question to you is where are they going to go first when they explore chronos and basically mm finance is being the first place that everybody goes when they enter the Kronos chain and thirdly once the whales have panic sold and are replaced by new users in the longer term horizon our ecosystem should have stabilized price wise no one doubts our track record so my follow up question is where will those previous whales go after they supposedly panic sold perhaps the answer to this question is similar to the answer above and listen I do honestly tend to agree with both of the points made by MM Finance here first of all although these changes with the visa uh, this week did cause a lot of emotional reaction a lot of selling in the ecosystem there is so much going on for crow outside of the ecosystem including the chronos chain an evm compatible chain that is trying to dominate web 3 and game fi and they are also correct that it stands to reason if mm finance does continue to pick back up with the activity and people want to come back to the chronos chain they most likely will end up back at the number one decks so after all the panic selling is done mm finance is looking to rebuild and actually have long-term holders in the project so i will be keeping a close eye on mm finance to see how they perform moving forward as once again it will be important to the chronos chain and with that guys i promise that is the last piece of bad news so now we are going to get into the good stuff now for starters here we saw some pretty impressive ui improvements to the DeFi wallet and i do think that this DeFi wallet is going to be more and more important moving forward as we mentioned in the visa changes video in the crypto earn video i think that DeFi is going to become incredibly more relevant moving forward as the sec continues to clamp down on these centralized exchanges i strongly believe that the crypto.com visa will act as sort of the beginner investment for people that are new to crypto and hopping on the platform and over time as people use the visa and get more and more comfortable and curious regarding crypto that they will tend to gravitate towards the DeFi wallet so we are always looking to see crypto.com improving not only the centralized exchange but also this DeFi wallet and some of the features they added here include some nice add-ons for your nfts so you can actually move your nfts off of crypto.com slash nft platform into the DeFi wallet and here you can actually look at its rarity ranking you can take a look at um, its traits as well like what percentage of the other nfts have those traits uh, another really cool feature they added here was actually the multi tab function for the DeFi app browser meaning that you can actually browse through multiple decentralized apps without needing to close the app every time <clears throat> and this is just a huge convenience thing in my opinion as it is incredibly annoying to have to close the app every single time you want to switch to another decentralized application and this just makes it much more beginner friendly and easy as well as the, abil the ability to bookmark your favorite dApps making it easier to get to them and you can see here now that they also went ahead and updated the earn ui as well they included multiple protocols per token as well as supporting the inter blockchain communication channel between chronos and cosmos now in another piece of news here looking at the crypto.com nft platform one thing they added that i really like is actually this activity section so now you can see on the crypto.com app yeah whoopsie i was browsing for some loaded lions earlier um but as you can see here on the crypto.com activity app we can go ahead and take a look at the 90 day chart and you can take a look at the price action history you can even see how based on this crow news loaded lions themselves dipped from about a floor price they were at 4k uh you know on april 25th and then they crater down to about a 3k floor price based on this crow news you can now take a look at the history and the uh, purchase history the bidding history all that good stuff so just another ui improvement to the crypto.com nft platform which we love to see 
Now, this piece of news here that came out is one that I honestly haven't seen anybody really talking about, and I find it a little strange because to me, this is actually a huge piece of news for Kronos, and what this is here is that Connect has integrated Kronos, uh, and the reason that they did go ahead and integrate with Kronos as they do value it as the first EVM compatible chain built on Cosmos. It is a layer one chain, and they, they acknowledge here that Kronos is aiming to massively scale the DeFi and Web3 user community by providing builders with the ability to instantly port apps and crypto assets from other chains while benefiting from a low transaction fees, high throughput, and fast finality. And Connext is building the interoperability network of sidechains and L2s. Now, by adding support for the Kronos chain, users will be able to onboard and offboard from the Kronos ecosystem directly from layer 2s and sidechain systems, circumventing the need to pay for extra gas costs. And Kronos chain users will have additional routes to traverse between chains and interact with assets where and how they want. So we can take a look here at what this actually looks like. And you can see that I can go ahead and I can actually go over to the BNB chain and take some Ethereum and then actually transfer it to the Kronos chain and get wrapped ETH in return. And in my opinion, this is absolutely a massive chain. We can do the same thing with Ethereum and move our ETH from ERC20 over to the Kronos chain. And what this is going to do is just uh, provide Kronos with a lot more potential to actually incorporate more coins and tokens into their decentralized applications. And I definitely will be keeping an eye on this project moving forward. And you can see so far, they already have projects like ETH, BNB, Polygon, Avalanche, Phantom, Gnosis, Arbitrum, Optimism, Moonbeam. So some very popular chains, Harmony One as well. And I'm going to be looking to see how they continue um, adding to this list of chains in the future to just one. Once again, further promote that interoperability between Kronos and other blockchains. Now here we see the successful deployment of the Kronos name service and we did make a video about this um, when it was in pre-release. It did come out on April 27th and we did actually go ahead and scoop up three domains for ourselves and this is a lot like unstoppable domains. So CNS will help users to map their public accounts on various blockchains like Kronos to a simpler, short and human readable username like John.Crow for example. And I actually know that one of our subscribers did go ahead and actually pick up john.crow so congrats to you my friend um but yeah, we've talked about this a lot with Unstoppable Domains, and basically this is the reason that I do think that these domains will become incredibly important moving forward. I sort of see it as the same transition from uh, having to memorize people's phone numbers to actually being able to add their contact information, and this is a perfect example here. You can take this mega confusing mumbo jumbo of letters and words and actually just created something more personalized like Billy.Crow. So for example, if I was stuck in the middle of nowhere without my wallet address and someone for some reason was like hey do you want some crypto i could be like sure send it to chronosking.crow because that is one of the domain names that i did pick up so i could be like sure send it to chronosking.crow and then boom they could just type in chronosking.crow on any app that is uh interacting with the chronos name service and then they will have all of my wallet addresses right there to go ahead and send the crypto to so i definitely see this as a project that it is in its very early phases but i am looking forward to see how they do integrate with other platforms moving forward. Now, last but not least, and for my favorite part of the Kronos Weekly Market Updates, we are going to take a look at some of the growth statistics for Kronos over this past week and a half. And we are also going to see that even with the pullback that the Kronos chain did experience, this growth is still considerably impressive. So first of all, we did surpass the 700,000 unique wallet addresses on Kronos. I cannot wait for us to hit that 1 million milestone, and I do think it will come within the next one to two months. Now, here we can take a look at the monthly growth rate in total unique addresses of top EVM blockchains and we see Kronos coming in here at 41.26% with Phantom in second place at only 10.72%. So Kronos outpacing second place by 4x here. We got Avalanche with 9.25% and BNB with only 5.3%, Polygon at 1.45% and Ethereum at 1.34%. So Kronos boasting a really impressive monthly growth growth rate in unique addresses of all the EVM blockchains. 
Now here we can actually see the total value locked performance of top EVM blockchains in the past 30 days. And even with the huge pullback that we did see in Kronos over the past couple of weeks, we can still see that Kronos is up 18% in the past month in terms of total value locked compared to Avalanche here going 5%. And then we actually see Ethereum, BNB, Polygon, and Phantom in the negative in terms of total value locked. And this is not surprising as we are in the midst of a crash slash bear market so it is very nice to see that chronos is still chugging along through all the fud not only with this project specifically but in the overall crypto space it is still growing at about 19 percent per month uh, in the last 30 days at least in terms of total value locked and here we have the monthly growth rate in actual transactions on the Kronos chain. And it is actually looking very similar here to the monthly growth rate in unique addresses at about 41%, meaning that majority of people that are actually signing up and creating a wallet on the Kronos chain, creating their own unique address, are actually also transacting on this blockchain. And that is reflected in the growth of the total transactions. Now this chart here is a really interesting one and one that I would like to keep an eye on moving forward. And what this is actually comparing is the market cap compared to the total value locked ratio of popular blockchains. And what we can basically see here is that near, uh, based on this statistic, would be the most overvalued in regards to their market cap when compared to the total value locked on the blockchain. Solana in second most overvalued, BNB in third, Celo in fourth, Ethereum fifth, Harmony sixth, and then we have Kronos in second place, indicating that the total value locked is not truly reflected in the market cap of this project yet this is a really interesting statistic and one that i would like to keep an eye on moving forward as tvl does absolutely play a role in my opinion in the market cap of the coin right because it would stand to reason that the more total value locked in the project the more of a market cap it is deserving as it does take up more of the DeFi space now here we can see that in terms of a weekly NFT sales volume, Kronos is growing at 100% per week. We have definitely been in a bit of an NFT boom over this past month or so, and Kronos has definitely been uh, you know, benefiting from this boom with 100% week over week growth rate in NFT sales volume compared to 56% on Solana, which will definitely be uh, cratering down now because it has been out for quite a few days, and then Ethereum, and you know, considering how mature Ethereum is the fact that it, it actually was up 40% this past week is still incredibly impressive and here once again we actually see the inflation rate of the top blockchain tokens and we can see that Kronos and once again is the least inflationary token or rather blockchain token by a long shot at 2.28% compared to Solana's inflation rate of 6% or sorry rather almost 7% Polygon's inflation rate of 6.8%, Phantom's inflation rate is 6.72, Avalanche at 6.3, and Near Protocol at 4.5. And now the last chart I'm going to show you guys is actually the social volume. What we can see here is that the monthly Twitter volume growth rate of top blockchains Kronos is once again in first place at 145% growth and some people think this may not be relevant but once again our investment thesis here is that we are looking to build more awareness for the Kronos chain for the crypto.com ecosystem and therefore this is something important that we do keep an eye on to make sure that the you know that society is becoming more aware of Kronos chain that people are talking about it more on Twitter on other social medias and that has absolutely been the case I have noticed a a lot more of the crow fam stepping up on twitter and representing the community and that is something that i love to see as we do want that awareness to continue growing so now let's actually just refresh right here to get a good look at the current total value log on the Kronos chain. And you can see here that we have corrected after surpassing that 4 billion mark. We are currently sitting at 2.89 billion. So we have corrected about 25% in uh, the past month, give or take. Um, and I mean, if we take a look though, like we are still sitting at basically mid March levels right now. So really we've been set back about a month and a half in terms of total value locked and considering all the FUD that has been spreading about Kronos, about Crypto.com. To me, this actually still seems incredibly impressive and does show the strength of this community overall. And once again, guys, do keep in mind that we were looking at, uh, let's say, 332 million in total value locked on November 
15th okay so we are about five months later here and we are now sitting at 2.89 billion in total value locked and do remember that chronos is still in its infancy stages as far as i am concerned when it does come to DeFi protocols now what we can do is go ahead and compare it here to other DeFi protocols and we see that even after a 26 percent correction this past month I mean, to be quite blunt, like everything had a pretty wicked correction this past month. So Kronos was not the only one. But even after this wicked correction, we are still sitting in ninth place. We have an incredibly significant lead over Arbitrum here in 10th place at 1.92 bill. And we do have about 5 billion, rather 6 billion to catch up here in total value locked if we do want to surpass Polygon. So the next targets on my list that I would like to see us take out here include Polygon, Phantom, and Tron. I do think it will take us a little bit longer to actually go ahead and catch up to Solana, but I have all the faith in the future that Kronos will end up in this top five, and that is what we are looking for moving forward. Now, given all of the fear this week, all of the horrible news that has come out for the Crypto.com ecosystem, this was honestly, as a crow holder, this was probably the first, the worst week that even I have experienced in the Kronos ecosystem. And I have been a part of this ecosystem for a long time. I have been a crow holder for quite a while, and I have never seen this much negative sentiment. So we are going to end this video off with three very important things that I want us to remember to help us keep that long-term perspective. And this first one here is a market cap comparison. And this is something that we have used in the past to actually create our own uh, market cap assumptions and price predictions for Crow. And what we can see here is that for Crow to catch up to Polkadot, it would have to hit 83 cents. For Crow to actually reach Cardano's market cap, it would have to hit $1.14 like are you kidding me crow in my opinion is a much stronger ecosystem than cardano so there is no reason we cannot surpass it eventually for crow to hit solana's market cap it would have to go to a buck 34 to hit bnb's market cap we would have to hit two dollars and 69 cents and this is where my first price target of 250 does come into play i even gave myself about 20 cents leeway in terms of the price target but our first price target for crow is at two dollars and 50 cents and that would put us close to binance's market cap now i personally believe that we will surpass binance eventually and this is why my longer term price targets are much higher than two dollars and fifty cents and listen, you guys can call me crazy. I've heard it before about many other investments. It's never going to go there, blah, blah, blah. That's what I'm waiting for. My first price target, I am waiting for Crow to hit that $2.50 level to finally be on par with BNB. And that is my personal conviction on this project. If you feel differently, I mean, I totally respect it as everyone's conviction is different. And that is the beauty of investing. But that is what I'm here for. That's what I'm waiting for. And if Crow was to hit the market cap of Ethereum, which I don't ever think will happen, but even if it was, we would be looking at a, a price of $14, which is absolutely absurd. Now, one thing I do want to keep in mind is that this assumes that they do not burn any more coins. Right now, we are making the assumption that the $26 billion, give or take, that is in float, that is what will stay in the crow float forever. But if Crypto.com did another burn, like for example, if they went ahead and burned half of the supply that was left, this $2.69 price target would now turn into about a $5.38 price target. So that is just something to keep in mind. And last but not least, if you have made it to the end of this video, if you are a true crow believer, I'm going to end it off with two tweets that I did uh, come out with this past week. And I do think it's very, very important. Now, the first one here, and this is really surrounding the visa FUD, okay? So for anybody still complaining, please direct me to a bank offering 4 to 8% on your debit visa balance, as well as 1.5 slash 3 or 5% cash back on your respective visa not to mention the other perks. This is why I remain long. And for the second tweet here, even if you guys do want to go ahead and say that the visa is trash, the visa has ruined everything, well, guys, people have been so hyper-focused on the visa that I think everyone's forgetting that there is much more to the Crypto.com ecosystem than their visa, okay? And here are the main three things that I am looking for. So number one, the Kronos chain in its infancy stages is already in ninth place in total value lock. Just think about that. Some blockchains have been out for years and are not even in the top 10. 
Number two, Crow GameFi is coming soon. And number three, DeFi offering a 12.4% yield on your Crow at the moment. Lots to look forward to for this project. In my opinion, many are too hyper-focused on the Visa with the changes. And once again, this is just a reminder for people that, you know, were potentially scared to just zoom out and to look at what Crow has going on in their ecosystem because there is so much more to it than those flashy metal cards, although they are quite nice, I cannot lie. There is so much to look forward to for this project moving forward in my personal opinion. Now, with that in mind, guys, the next Crow focused video that we do have coming out will be completely focused on GameFi. If you did not watch the first GameFi video that we made, uh, kind of breaking down the moves that the Kronos chain is making in regards to the metaverse, I highly suggest you check out that video as there is a lot of, of information in that video that many people are not talking about, but there is they are making a lot of moves behind the scenes that I am definitely beginning to notice. So this next video is really going to break down some of the NFTs that I have been purchasing in the crypto.com ecosystem why i have been purchasing them and why i think that gamefi will be coming around for the chronos chain sooner than people think so with that said i hope you guys did enjoy this weekly chronos update it did have to come to you in the middle of the week because between myself getting sick and then all the crazy changes going on i was not able to get it out on this previous weekend but i am hoping to get back on track with dropping these videos every sunday for you guys for you to enjoy on the last day of the weekend. So with that said, I hope you did enjoy this content. Stay tuned for the next video. Peace out for now.